Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the garage. Um, this is, I think, episode 30. And this, I, I hope you guys are half as excited as I am because I think the next series of episodes are gonna be a lot of fun and hopefully entertaining and helpful for you guys as well. So um, we're in this episode and the next, we're going to be covering the proper engine break-in procedure. Um, if you guys have been following my progress, uh, you know that we've been doing a whole bunch of work in the engine compartment. Most important of which was uh, we put it in a rebuilt cylinder head. And uh, while we were in there, we did a whole bunch of other work like uh, refreshing the EFI system uh, with um, some new plugs and brand new injectors. We also replaced the, the distributor. We uh, also replaced all of the cooling components. So there's a whole bunch of work that we did, but um, all of that work culminated, I, I think, in the last episode where I was really ecstatic to uh, finally uh, push in the key uh, and crank the engine and verify, at least for a short period, that the engine does idle and it idles well. But you guys also probably noticed me cut the engine off after um, a short while because, again, we need to follow a very specific set of procedures to make sure that the engine is broken and properly so that you ensure its longevity and um, you ensure that the engine, uh, especially internal components, aren't damaged in the engine's most vulnerable state, which is, I, I think, the first probably the 100 miles of its operation. So um, I made a little checklist here. These are all the steps that we would uh, we will want to go through. Um, and as we kind of check these things off, I'll try to explain why I am doing what I'm doing and the logic behind it. And after this, so this is, I, I think, the engine break-in procedure. After that, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of testing and tuning to the car. Um, this is not in any particular order. This is just a parking lot of stuff that I need to do, like uh, retorquing the cylinder head bolts, uh, adjusting the valves, compression testing, uh, vacuum, fuel pressure testing, all of that good stuff. So um, <laughs> I think this is a very exciting time, but it all starts with, I guess, putting in some water and engine oil in the car. So let's get started. <laughs> So actually, before uh, we do anything, there is one thing that I want to do first, which is installing this fuel pressure gauge uh, to the car. I had this installed earlier, but it leaked fuel pretty badly when I started it up, so I took it out. So I want to show you guys the proper way to, I guess, install this. And you'll notice that my fuel pressure gauge goes all the way up to 100. Uh, and we're going to install this right here between the, um, the filter and the fuel rail. So this is a pretty good place to put it because you'll have easy readings. So first you'll want to um, depressurize the, the fuel system if you're doing this. Um, I know from last time I did this, uh, this is quite a lot of fuel is going to leak out. And this is probably not the best way to depressurize the fuel system, but this is probably the easiest way. So I'm just going to let it leak out and hopefully it doesn't cause too much of a mess. All right, let's see if we can pull this off. Oh, there's some gas. More gas, more gas. Come on. Oh, that is not much as I expected. Oh, the fuel is draining out. All right, <laughs> that was not as messy as last time, so I'm learning. So we have the I guess, how do you pronounce this? Gasoila E-Seal, which is supposed to help uh, sealing threads for, whoa. Wow, that is some weird looking fluid. Anyway. We're going to apply this for the first few threads. Yo. 
still want to take a couple of adjustable wrenches to tighten this as far as it'll go. I, I don't think there is a cure time to this. Um, it's actually supposed to never harden. So I think we can just install this and it'll work from the get-go. By the way, I really like Erdwin tools. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not sponsored by them, um, <laughs> but I, um, I really do like the quality of their tools and it's actually not that much more expensive um, than Craftsman tools, but they seem to um, be much higher quality. So I really like them a lot. All right, now that we've made sure that there's no uh, kinks in the hose that would mess with the fuel delivery, let's tighten these down. All right, we'll have to keep a close eye here uh, whenever we start the car so that uh, we make sure that there's no leaking. All right, so the fuel pressure gauge is installed. Now we are going to fill the radiator as, um, as much as it'll take with just water and some antifreeze. Alright, you'll notice that I have the car jacked up and tilted um, up a little bit in the front. And that's actually to ensure uh, whenever we car turn the uh, engine on, and the uh, engine gets to its operating temperature that all the air bubbles uh, come out this way and it exits. Um, I think it's called burping the system where um, you don't want any air bubbles trapped in the cooling channels. So lifting it up uh, at the front slightly like this helps it, uh, helps the system uh, quote unquote burp uh, the air bubbles out easier. But right now, we're just going to fill it up as much as it'll take. And later, we'll drain all of this fluid out, fluid out uh, and inspect it. Make sure there's no uh, gunk or, even worse, oil in it. Um, and then we'll replace it with the good stuff. But since the weather is cold, we are going to put in some antifreeze. Now we're just gonna keep the radiator uh, cap off uh, for the initial cycle. So again, all the, the air bubbles are able to get burped out. And you'll see the, the radiator uh, or the water level go lower and lower as that happens. All right, we're also going to fill the engine with some engine oil. Um, if you're, um, if it's winter, you want to use a 10W30, which is slightly less viscosity than the stuff that they recommend that you use in the summer, which is 10W40. Um, the engine should take five quarts. I drained out the oil completely actually, so it should take nearly the full uh, five quarts here. And this is always a little bit messy. All right, before I pour all of it in, I'm just gonna check the level because even though I drained uh, almost all of the engine oil out, I'm sure there's some still sitting in the car and I don't want to overfill the engine oil. So it'll take plenty more. Right. Yep, we just put fluid in and I don't know if you can see here, but the oil is um, just around uh, three fourths way of this marker. So that's good. Oil looks clean, obviously, because we just put no oil in. 
And unlike the coolant uh, or the radiator cap, we are going to close this because it's going to cause a massive vacuum leak if you don't close it. We can check this off and uh, let's go start the car. But before we start the car, I want to do one more thing to get ready. All right, I'm going to attach this timing light. Um, this is a timing light that I bought a little while ago. So what's cool about this timing light is that it actually shows me um, the engine RPM, which is really useful um, if I wanna know how fast the engine is rotating um, while I'm not in the cabin of the car. So uh, what we also want to do is get ready to time the engine um, when we start it up. So it actually serves two purposes. And remember, right after we start the car, we're going to have to keep the engine at above 1800 RPM. So this is going to help me do that. You'll want to connect it to the battery. Yeah, this thing is super, super loose, but I'll have to replace that later. And when we connect it, this should turn on, which tells me the, the battery has 12.6 volts, which is awesome. And this clip here goes to the very first cylinder. Um, ignition wire to the very first uh, cylinder spark plug. And as soon as we crank the engine, it should tell me um, the RPM. So let's get ready to start the car. And after we start the car, we are going to immediately set the idle to 1800. So here we go. Let me have my screwdriver ready. All right, here goes nothing.
So um, the coolant looks like it's still pretty full. I think it burped most of the air bubbles out, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this now. And now we're gonna start it back up, but we're going to adjust the idle back to 800, which it should be uh, set at. So let's start the car back up again. We got through everything that we needed to do. And the next up is test drive that we can't actually do right now because the, the Datsun doesn't actually have brake lights and it has barely functioning headlights. So it is probably unsafe for us to go out for a drive today, but uh, this is what we'll do in the next episode. We'll actually go for a drive and uh, we'll check a whole bunch of stuff uh, while we're driving. So uh, see you guys next time.